I know my dad's a misogynist, hands down. We were sitting at a table with some of his friends and a tall woman walked by and it goes, oh snap, look at that, a giraffe. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> I'm like, she's just a tall lady, she's not an animal. Is gender a construct? I'll take this one. But <laughs> <laughs> right, there's only one transgender person here, so Steve, why don't you take it? <laughs> gender, is it a construct, would you reckon? I, I'd be very interested to hear exactly what you think. Uh, it is, definitely. Literally, I've literally been constructed by a professional <laughs> in certain degrees. Yes, it's a construct. Sex, however, that is yeah. genetic information. I wasn't working late in the laboratory one evening and fell into a vat of gender fluid. Right? <laughs> it's, it, it's genetics, it, they are what they are, and they can change, like, if you get radioactive poisoning, but yeah. gender is a construct, I made it up. It's spectrums, lovely sexy spectrum, let's all get involved. But at one end is a man, and other end is a woman. Stop telling me there's no such thing as a woman, these are bloody that's, expensive. I think that's really fucking interesting as well, because, yeah. like, uh, like, I don't, that's the one kind of part of, like, kind of liberal culture that I find a bit weird is the idea of like flattening everything out as if the, there is no such thing as masculinity and femininity. Yeah. What we really want to say is there is masculinity, femininity, and everything but, in between. but it's completely okay yeah. to be a man who isn't masculine. Yeah. yeah, yeah and a woman yeah. who isn't feminine. Yeah. But it's like, how would you even know that you were a woman if there was no such thing as being a woman? Right. Do you know what I mean? That's and, it, yeah. And, and there's nothing wrong with you being uh, a woman. People don't like to divide sex and gender because it's like, when did that happen? But there was a time when like race and class were they're just the same thing. If mm. you were of a certain race, then you were lower class. Yeah. And, we, and one's a construct and one's genetic. Yeah. And you don't change race, but you can change class. Mm. And then that happened, they were like, oh shit, some of these like differently colored people are a different class to us now, oh shit. Like we're, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So sex and gender, different things. Yeah. Get over it, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> What's the funniest or dumbest thing you've done because of lad culture? Uh, I was once drank so much that I was sick on the top of my own head. I drank that much and the, the, uh, the room was spinning, so I had to lie down. Right. Picture, like, I'm lying on my back here. Mm -hmm. right? So I'm lying fully horizontal. Yep. And I've like, suddenly the room's spinning. And then I've, I've had this like, urge to be sick, but it's like a projectile vomit. So I've gone like, and it shot up in the air, but the force of the vomit coming from my, <laughs> this area, yeah. I've gone, <laughs> and then it hit me on the top of the head. I'd, I'd just eaten like a, a frozen ready meal of noodles, so I had like all noodles on the top of my head. Uh, but yeah, that's probably the worst thing. What about you? No, nah, we don't really have that in Malaysia. No? Or, noodles? Uh, you have noodles, don't you? We have you? noodles. We don't have toxic masculinity, though. Oh, we've got lots of noodles. As a person who is pansexual, I need people to put some respect on my dinner time. I need... <laughs> To do that. I feel like bi people, like bisexual people, are often uh, like just dissed, man. They seem as greedy, aren't they? You know what I mean? Yeah, like you want it all, or like, oh, you'll be the perfect ingredient for a threesome or something. Yeah. You know, like. They throw you in there. Yeah, maybe I'm gonna sprinkle a little Carol on my failed marriage, she'll spice that shit yeah. up. And it's just like, as Carol, I'm not gonna do that. Yeah. I'm just gonna make an attempt to take your wife. Because not everyone, even within the community, like, understands the entirety of the community. Does being ignorant to current gender racial terminology make you a bad person? No. It's quite a new thing. Mm -hmm. It's quite a new thing, so I think people are still getting used to it. But obviously, once someone corrects you, because it's, it's, I think it's personal to the individual. Yeah. So what may offend one person doesn't actually offend another. So there was a time when you could say um, half cast. Oh, yeah, remember that. You couldn't say that anymore. Yeah. But our parents missed yeah. all of that. Yeah, My yeah. household, yeah. they missed it all. He's a half cast. <laughs> I'm like, mom, you can't. Is it half cast now? Was it no half cast last week? Why would it now be mixed race today? <laughs> I think people overthink about this stuff, but it's still a different time, different terms. Now everyone's getting too excited about these racial and gender words, trans this, trans that, over this, over that, this color mix, eh, Afro Caribbean, Afro Latino. Af Yo, bro, I am tired. <laughs> What's your name? Like, well, yes, you can love a woman. Mm -hmm. Yes, you can love a man. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes, you can love someone who's non-binary. Mm -hmm. Yes, you can love whoever you can't Do love. You, want. you can't love animals. That's a different yeah. level. That's and that needs it. to be taught because some people don't know. <laughs> people have sex with horses. Weird. Anyway, horses are the dick too big. 
Is it true that in the UK they will tell boys about masturbating but not girls? I think that was the case. We had separate sex ed, so it was like all the boys would go into a room and all the girls would go into a room. I just don't understand that because I think that perpetuates the whole thing of guys being like, Ugh, periods, Ugh, whereas yeah, if you like yeah. learn about them, yeah. then it's not gross. Because obviously yeah. we were like that as well. We were like, what the fuck? We're going to bleed? Like, Ugh! And all the boys didn't learn about it, so they went. So then the boys get like a double whammy of like, what? What is that? And also yeah. my girlfriend's bleeding, and that's yeah. like, what the hell? So I think yeah, so much better to have them both together. Yes. I remember asking my best friend, who was a man, <laughs> a boy, a young boy. <laughs> <laughs> I was also a young girl. <laughs> um, Your best friend's a nine-year-old. Best friend's a nine-year-old. He's my best friend. Um, <laughs> <laughs> just because I'm very tired of that. I asked my friend when I, we were at like primary school I was like can you can you move your penis like a tail and he was like I don't know what <laughs> and I didn't know anything about penises the thought of a penis was so embarrassing until about four years ago <laughs> and and, uh, and and guys like don't know about vaginas no well they do obviously but like I too many like, holes not, not until they get older and start you know getting in them but also we didn't learn anything about being gay we didn't learn yeah, anything no about no gay sex at all and also as well like when you watch the videos like it's all white people so it's like oh, only white people have sex. <laughs> what sucks is when men, like, men don't see that feminism is for them as well and that it might benefit you to feel less societal pressures to like do certain things. I grew up in like Texas, right? And I went to like a private Christian university. It was very like hetero and everyone was like, let's get married. Um, and I think I just went into these really lame traditional attitudes about things that you do in a relationship yeah. and how like one person like pays for stuff and whatnot. Yeah. Fast forward to my first queer relationship, I was like, dudes got it so hard. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I have to buy stuff? Yeah. <laughs> and then I was like, wait, why haven't I always been? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Cause I was like, this is hard. Like, like y'all don't need that pressure. I mean, also I think a lot of men actually aren't feminists because why would you give up power. Oh, okay, yeah. Because I mean, because it, 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 and I think a lot of the time more rights for marginalized groups feels like less rights for the groups in power, which in it's reality isn't true. Yeah. But it feels true and sometimes we act on our emotions and vote on our emotions and because it feels like in order for someone else to have more, you need to have less, you don't want to give that up. Even though it's factually completely untrue. <laughs> What do you reckon is the most ridiculous thing about lad culture? They're all horrible singers. <laughs> They're heard lad sing. Oy, 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 oy. Yeah, is that how you get taught singing in like nurse, nursery school, kindergarten? I, I love that. Like nothing, it's like nothing about lad culture. Just can you just try and be in tune, gents? Please? If you want to sing on the train, make it good. That'd be. That would also be as deserving if a lot of lads started like singing in like perfect harmony on a train. That also wouldn't be okay. No, I want lad a cappella culture. <laughs> That's what I want to see. They're harmonizing their football anthems, whatever. Yeah. Your mom's a whore, a whore, a whore. <laughs> I don't think that's a football one. I think that was just general. Sure, whatever. Just sing better. 